Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to be making some floral bouquets that are interestingly inspired. One is by Penny Black and one is by Honey Bee, both very different stamp sets, as you can see. But a few weeks ago, I did this video. It was a live broadcast that I did for my patrons. And patrons are people who just support me by throwing a couple of bucks in a month doesn't have to be much. You can do it for one buck if you want, or more than that if you want some extra benefits. But everybody who's a patron gets one of my live broadcasts a month for free with your patronage. And you can go watch all of the previous ones. They're all there for you. You can log in and register to watch any replays. But this one was a real-time one that I did this month. And I talk through it. I talk about how I am developing the flowers and the colors. And sometimes I lose my train of thought because my brain doesn't always work when I'm making art. So that's why live videos aren't always my best. But it was a really popular one. And I thought you might like to see it. In addition to which, I wanted to find a way to make this doable for more people who don't want to just start with a blank 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper like I did to make a giant bouquet. Some of you are ready to do that. Some of you have taken enough of my classes, my wildflower classes, all my different ones, and you're maybe ready to do that. But this is going to show you how you can do that if you're not a pro at that kind of thing as of yet. This is a, an intermediate step to get there. So pick out some colors. You don't have to use these colors at all. These are used on both of these cards. Just pick out some happy flower colors. For some of them, you'll want to have a, a medium, a light, medium, and dark, maybe. Some of them, just two colors is going to be fine. The stamp, you're going to stamp in a light ink. I'm using no line ink, but you can use any light ink that you've got. If you're going to be doing a lot of pink flowers and you have a super pale pink ink, then by all means, use that a yellow, a light green, or something. But you could also do second generation stamping. So stamp it on a piece of scratch paper and then stamp it on your real paper. It doesn't even matter if it doesn't stamp perfectly. This is just to give you an idea of where to put some flowers and what they might look like. So you'll notice that the bottom two flowers I created in one color, the top two in a different, and the bottom two have the bottom petals that hang out, and the top two don't. It's one way that I just wanted to make a variant on what's in the stamp. And then I took a bunch of the things that are supposed to be leaves, and I'm making them little purple flowers, little just leaf-shaped types of flowers. The cool thing about doing this is that you don't even have to know really how to draw the flowers. Some of them you'll want to spend a little more time on. In my big bouquet, I spent a little more time on the sunflower because that's the, the big spectacular flower in that bouquet. But a lot of it you can just make some marks, and by the time you get all the color added in, and you have the paper wrapped around it and the stems coming out the bottom, it's going to read like a bouquet. So the idea of, of doing this is just to practice letting the marker make its marks. And this is a great way to get flicking practice because all these little leaves and things are, are great for practicing that and seeing what kind of marks your markers can make. If your marker is has a really fresh nib, it's going to be a little different than if your marker has kind of a soggy, sad nib that's going to need change soon. You may notice that. Uh, there's some where you might want to use the chisel end to make a long streak because the marker nib is drier. If it's like mine, my marker nibs are not always in great shape when you're talking about the chisel. But I can make a long piece of grass sticking out of one of these bouquets sometimes with that better than I can make it with the nib itself, the, the super brush nib. But I'm just adding flowers in between everything. You can see there's lots of openings in this bouquet, in the stamp set. I'm just adding flowers in between. Some of it is just dots and you know creating little sections. There's sections of yellow, sections of purple, and then using the green to break up the sections and to push one flower in behind another by drawing some leaves over top of the ones that are behind. 
And you can play around with this forever. You can noodle at these for the longest time. Keep them as fresh as you can. Leave some whites in there because this is supposed to feel more like a sketched bouquet, not like I'm going to fill in every square inch of this. Just let yourself relax and play with it. It's a, a great exercise to learn more about your Copic markers and to practice, especially if you have been in any of my floral classes, because I have got a whole bunch of them over on my site. And for those especially who have taken my wildflower class, you could think about the shapes that you've learned in the wildflower classes and apply them to something like this and find some stamp bouquets that you have in your collection. Because I know you all have bouquets. I just know it because they sell out like crazy. You guys love them. So you could do this with lots of different ones, or you can go get these and follow along with what I'm creating here. Now the um, cards that I'm making with these, I'm just leaving them clean and simple. I just popped the panel onto a card base using some dimensional adhesive, nice white on white and fresh and simple. Let the flowers be the hero. If you spent all this time on them, let them sing. Now this stamp is much larger. The flowers are bigger. And I'm really glad I colored it first because it helped me to get to know what that flower is structured like. Because as I was working on it, you can see they're a little overworked. And the one on the left, I spent a little bit too much time and too much ink on them. I started out trying to make yellow flowers and then they turned into peach flowers. And they kept turning until they became really dark red flowers. They're still pretty, but they're not what my original vision was. But it really helped me to get to know the structure by trying to make those look like they were well colored and, and had a lot of depth to them. When I got over to doing the ones in this looser type of bouquet, I ended up being able to make fewer strokes, leave some open spaces, and just go for lighter colors and not get so heavy with it because. This feels much sketchier and looser and fresher, and I guess more springtime. The other one is just a much more serious bouquet, and this one, this new one feels more playful. And that's one of the things I like about it. And by the way, if you're interested in flowers and you love taking flower classes, they are all on sale. I have put them on sale over on my site on the sale page. So all week long, you can get flower classes at a discount, which is awesome. So here I'm going to start doing the same thing I did with the other bouquet and building in smaller elements because we've got the big flowers now and I'm gonna put those little purple flowers in and then using my marker to just lay it down and make big fat leaves in this particular instance. It's a much bigger bouquet, so I need to make bigger marks. Practicing this on a small bouquet and a large bouquet is going to really help you to learn what it takes to make different kinds of marks so that when you get different bouquet stamps in your collection in the future, you'll have an idea whether they work well for this technique or not. For some of you, a small bouquet is going to be perfect for the way that you make your marks. For other people, you're going to need a big bouquet. It's really up to your style and the way that you wield the markers. Some of that is practice, but some of that is just your individualness as an artist, because you don't make things the same way I don't. I make things, and I don't make things the way that you make things. So let yourself be unique as an artist, and and use the skills that you have, and the style that you have to create beautiful bouquets. So here I'm going in with a darker green to add a little bit of a half stroke to each one of the other leaves just to give them a little bit of depth. And with any of these also, I didn't mention earlier, if you end up with a flower that looks really dorky, and that is certainly possible, just put some baby's breath in there. When you're all done, you can add some baby's breath on top in cover part of that flower, or add some leaves over top of it. Like these little leaves, if you wanted to cover up one of the flowers a little bit, put one of these little branches in there and just fill in a spot so that it ends up sort of covering the part that you didn't like. Now, most people are going to look at it, and they're not going to see what you see. They're not going to see, oh my goodness, you really messed up that flower. It looks mutated. <laughs> For me, some of my stuff looks mutated. That middle red flower does not look quite right. 
it is a side view of a flower, so it's a little harder to draw just by by doing this technique that I'm doing. So I was thinking the whole time, what am I going to do to fix that? And how do I repair that portion of it? What can I put in front of it in order to kind of make it look a little less weird? So I put a, a bunch of greens in front of it. And you can put more greens than that. You can put just a little bit. You don't have to cover up the whole thing. Just put a little something in there so it looks like it's interactive with the bouquet. It's tucked in there. You always have that flower in a bouquet that's smushed, and that's going to be my smushed flower. So we'll, we'll call that good. And add in, you know, a little bit of darker greens to create that depth as well. Just, you know, squint at it and see what's missing. Is there a spot that looks different than the others? Do you have your, your darks evenly spread out? Do you have them in a lot of different places or are they all in one section? That sort of thing. If I'm taking a lighter green and making something a little lacy around the outside edges, it just makes me feel like I've got a little more detail in it. But be careful because these grow. You can tell how much bigger this bouquet got than the original stamp was. So if you run out of paper, that's on you, not me. <laughs> Keep an eye on where your flower bouquet is going. So there is the two different looks from one stamp set which I think is always good. It's always nice to have a different way to approach the stamp sets we buy and be able to do something different with them. And as I help you to gain more art skills, hopefully you're able to, I guess, branch out in your own stamping and learn how to do this with other types of stamps too. Try it with animals, try it with other things and see what you can do with your coloring. Now, if you are also interested in drawing and you watched my scribble sketch a few weeks ago, I'm going to be doing a live YouTube with a scribble sketch in it. So I don't know what I'm going to draw yet, but I would invite you to leave comments in the doobly-doo and let me know what you think I should draw. Give me some suggestions and we'll see what I come up with by Saturday, the 23rd. All right, take care, guys. I'll see you on Saturday, I hope. Bye-bye.